ports armature winding design and before moving to this topic i would like to mention one point this topic is exclusively for those who are preparing for engineering services civil services and state level services examination this is not in the syllabus of gate examination if you are preparing only for gate this topic is not in the syllabus this is exclusively for engineering services examination civil services examination state level services examination like genco transco discoms and psu examinations okay not for gate examination okay now let us see what are the topics we are going to discuss in this armature winding design i told you that dc machine will have two types of armature windings lap winding and wave winding so with respect to lap winding and wave winding design there are four important calculations okay known as back pitch calculation front pitch calculation winding pitch calculation and commutator pitch calculation based on these calculations physically the winding structure will be done on the slots of the armature okay so before discussing about these four calculations first let us see what is the basic difference between single layer winding and double layer winding based on the construction windings are being divided into two categories known as single layer winding and double layer winding okay see this all right now see first let me try to discuss the difference between a single layer winding and a double layer winding i already mentioned in the earlier classes of dc generator itself what is the difference between a coil and a coil side we know that a coil may have any number of turns it may be a single turn coil two turn coil three turn coil any number of turns may exist in a coil suppose if there is a coil with multiple number of turns we will draw diagram like this yes or not so this is the diagram representing a coil with multiple number of turns it may have even 100 turns also but whatever may be the number of turns how many terminals are accessible out of the coil two terminals are accessible one will be positive another one will be negative and in this particular coil you tell me this is called as one coil side this is called as another coil side if one coil side is under the uh, influence of north pole the other coil side will be under the influence of south pole so if this is under north pole let us say this is the polarity of induced emf if it is under south pole can i say the polarity will be exactly opposite this is going to be the polarity now if you look at the back end connection can i say dot polarity is connected to cross polarity when a dot and cross are connected i can say two opposite polarities are connected therefore voltages will aid so that we will get a resultant of 2e voltage here if one coil side voltage e another coil side voltage e and what is the resultant output voltage becomes 2e so this is basically what is mean by a coil so in this entire discussion of armature winding design i will never talk about a word called coil i will always talk about coil sides if i say a machine has c number of coils tell me how many coil sides will be available 2c number of coil sides will be available because every coil will have two sides therefore c coils will have 2c coil sides now let us see what is the basic difference between single layer winding and double layer winding okay all right now the name of the winding itself is saying single layer winding means you see we know that on the surface of the armature number of slots will be available what is the purpose of a slot the purpose of a slot is to place armature conductors right so see assume number of slots are available like this yes i am drawing linearly but actual armature looks like circular so this is a slot this is a slot slot and slot two adjacent slots are being separated by teeth now we can place armature conductors on these slots now single layer winding means each slot will be occupied by one coil side 
this circle is not representing a conductor i am repeating that a circle is representing a coil side so single layer winding means only one layer will be there and each slot is occupied by one coil side suppose imagine i have a machine having 100 slots if there are 100 slots how many coil sides we can prepare yes 100 coil sides because each uh, slot will be occupied by one coil side 100 coil sides means how many coils obviously 50 coils because every coil will have two sides 100 coil sides means 50 coils so therefore what is the relation between number of slots and number of coils therefore i can write number of slots are equal to two times of coils okay so this is the relation between number of slots and coils in a single layer winding now let us see what is mean by double layer winding okay very easy the name itself is saying every slot will be divided into two layers now see this diagram assume this is a slot present in dc machine like that number of slots will be available each slot will be separated from the adjacent slot using teeth now you see every slot will be divided into two virtual layers okay this is called as top layer of the slot and this is called as bottom layer of the slot now in double layer winding top layer will be occupied by one coil side bottom layer will be occupied by another coil side that means indirectly how many coil sides in each slot two coil sides similarly the next slot occupied by two coil sides two coil sides i am saying once again that circle is not representing a conductor or a turn or a coil it is representing a coil side okay now tell me suppose if the machine is having 100 slots then how many coil sides can be arranged yes every slot is having two coil sides therefore i can write 200 coil sides are possible 200 coil sides means how many number of coils 100 coils because every coil will have two sides therefore 100 slots 100 coils therefore what is the relation between number of slots and number of coils yes number of slots are equal to number of coils that is a double layer winding number of slots are equal to two times of the coils that is a single layer winding now practically which layer winding is generally preferred for uh, dc machines yes always double layer winding is preferred not only dc machines even ac machine also like induction and synchronous double layer winding is always preferred because of two reasons one is more number of coil sides can be arranged for a given number of slots that is one reason second reason is mechanically mechanically double layer winding is more stronger compared to single layer winding when you try to rotate rotor at very high speed single layer winding is mechanically very weak whereas a double layer winding is mechanically very strong very strong okay now double layer winding can be again many types okay you see here presently in this diagram how many coil sides are there in each slot two coil sides similarly you see one more diagram assume these are the slots present on the armature surface now every slot is divided into two layers virtually okay <coughs> top layer and bottom layer now what i am doing is i am placing two coil sides in top layer and two coil sides in bottom layer two coil sides in top layer two coil sides in bottom layer so this is also a double layer winding only two layers are there top layer and bottom layer but you tell me every slot is occupied by how many coil sides four coil sides okay four coil sides in that case number of slots becomes number of coils by two okay similarly i can uh, arrange double layer winding in one more manner also let me increase the width of this slot okay see if the diagram is like this again every slot is divided into two layers now what i am doing is i am keeping three coil sides in each slot three coil sides in each slot if three coil sides are arranged in each slot 
that is also a double layer winding only top layer bottom layer but more coil sides are there how many coil sides in each slot six coil sides three sides per layer six sides per slot in that case number of slots becomes c by 4 like that you can decide how many number of slots are required based on the number of coils are given if there is no information regarding the number of coil sides per each slot by default we will assume this is the design by default double layer winding means two coil sides per slot in case if it is specifically mentioned four coil sides per slot six coil sides per slot can you tell me what will be the next design top layer four sides bottom layer four sides eight coils per slot like that we can proceed for double layer winding so double layer winding is always mechanically preferred it is more stronger by default double layer winding will have two sides per slot and the number of slots requirement is equal to number of coils if a machine has a 1200 coils then 1200 slots are required if there are 2000 coils 2000 slots are required so number of slots are equal to number of coils and double layer winding is always preferred now let us dig deep into the design of the armature circuit okay now the next concept is numbering of coil sides it is an industrial practice any manufacturing facility has to follow this numbering style then only it will be easy for the workers to design armature winding okay so see here what is the numbering of coil sides Suppose assume uh, we have a slot like this, okay, right, this is how the machine having a number of slots, double layer winding, so every slot has two coil sides, okay, like this. Now how to number these coil sides is the question here, yes, according to Indian electricity standards, always top layer will be numbered by odd number bottom layer will be given by even number i am repeating top layer should be always given by odd number like 1 3 5 7 9 11 like that bottom layer will be always given by even number like 2 4 6 8 10 12 like that it is an industrial practice okay so see how can we number these slots i mean coil sides this is the first slot top layer odd number 1 bottom layer even number 2 top layer odd number 3 bottom layer even number 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 like that okay top layer is always odd number bottom layer is always even number suppose if there are more coil sides per each slot okay look at this another design suppose there are four coil sides in each slot how to give the numbering that numbering is very important in order to complete the winding structure okay top layer is always odd number so this is one bottom layer even number two next three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve that is how the numbering will be given top layer odd number bottom layer even number now let us understand how the coil sides are connected from north pole to south pole and how output will be accessed okay look at this now let us assume a machine is having two poles there is a north pole here and there is a south pole here okay now under north pole let us say there are uh, three slots okay i would like to draw here okay with this north pole is completed next south pole has another three slots okay with this south pole is completed okay number of slots are there every slot is having two coil sides okay every coil is having two coil sides how to number them as i told you top layer odd number this is one two three 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now the question is that when a coil is there like this, suppose if the first coil side has a voltage E, second coil side has a voltage E, 
Now, what is the resultant coil voltage we will get? 2E. That means both voltages must aid. In order to add these two voltages, we will use this back end connection. We will call it as back end connection or overhang connection. Okay, you can call with any name. Now, if this coil side is under north pole, the next coil side must be under which pole? South pole. Then only the voltages will add. Why? Because north pole polarity and south pole polarity are exactly opposite. When you connect opposite polarities together, then only voltages will aid. So, to add the voltages of one coil side to the other coil side, if one coil side is under north pole, the other coil side must be under which pole? South pole. Let us see how this is possible over here. Okay. Now, look at this. Uh, these two coil sides are under which pole? North pole. Assume the north pole polarity is cross. Then definitely south pole polarity is going to be dot. Now, in order to add the voltages together, always opposite polarity terminals must be connected. And also you see this diagram is representing only the front cross section of the conductors, but not the total length of the conductors. Understand? Let me try to draw the total length here. You see, I am drawing first coil. First coil, every coil will have how many coil sides? Yes, every coil will have two coil sides. This is, let us say, a coil. This is one side of the coil. I will call it as starting of the coil. This is the other side of the coil. I will call it as ending of the coil. This is the starting and that is the ending. If this is under north pole, this must be under south pole. So see, this coil, first coil I am drawing. First coil has one side and that is under which pole? North pole. You see, this is one side of the coil. It must be connected to the next side, which is under which pole? South pole. Now, can I say starting of north pole must be connected to starting of south pole? Can I say starting of south pole means 7 and 8? Okay. Now, remember one thing. This is already top layer of the slot or bottom layer of the slot. Yes, this is already top layer. The starting is on the top layer of the slot. Therefore, the ending should be on the bottom layer of the slot, then only mechanically the winding is very strong. I am repeating. Every coil will have two sides. If the starting of the coil is on the top layer, ending of the coil must be on the bottom layer. Now see here, uh, for the south pole, can I say this is the starting side? Okay. Now, uh, the bottom must be connected to the north pole, you see. That is number 8 you are observing. Okay. So therefore, for the first coil, this is the starting and this is the ending. Starting is under north pole top layer, ending is under south pole bottom layer. These two will be connected together. What is this connection? We will call it as back end connection or overhang connection. And these two front ends will be accessed like this and here you will get the resultant voltage to you. This is how a coil looks like. Now tell me, every coil, few points we need to underline here. Every coil will have how many sides? Two sides. If one side is under north pole, the other side must be under south pole. If north pole side is on the top layer, south pole side should be on the bottom layer. Then only mechanically the winding is very strong. Okay. Similarly, you tell me next time the second coil will start with 3 here, the number 3. That is north pole or south pole? North pole top layer that must be connected to south pole bottom layer. South pole bottom layer means number 10 here you see. This is going to be the second coil. Next third coil will start with number 5. This is north pole top layer. It must be connected to south pole bottom layer. This is the third coil. Like that, number of coils can be arranged. Understand or not? Okay. So, once we understand how a coil will be placed on the slots of a machine, now we are eligible to discuss about what is mean by back pitch, what is mean by front pitch, winding pitch and commutator pitch. Okay. So, re I am repeating the final conclusions here. Every coil will have two sides. Starting side will be always placed on the top layer. Ending side will be always placed on the bottom layer. 
if starting is under north pole ending will be under south pole understand or not okay let us see all right let us first discuss about uh, lap winding then we will discuss about wave winding okay so why the name is given as a lap we will understand now okay so once again you see i am taking two pole machine you can even consider a four pole machine six pole machine any number of poles just basic definition i would like to discuss okay a north pole and south pole let us assume north pole has three slots three slots means how many coil sides six coil sides why because every slot will have two sides double layer okay six coil sides in those six coil sides three will be on the top layer three will be on the bottom layer top layer will be always numbered with odd number bottom layer will be always given with even number so let me try to draw here okay so see a uh, top layer first one this is the first coil side number one next bottom layer to make it easy i would like to draw bottom layer with a different color you see blue color i am using bottom layer means even number 2 next slot top layer odd number 3 bottom layer even number 4 next slot top layer odd number 5 bottom layer even number 6 so you tell me how many coil sides 6 coil sides under north pole next six coil sides under south pole let me go to the south pole top layer odd number that is seven bottom layer even number that is eight top layer odd number that is nine bottom layer even number that is ten top layer odd number that is eleven bottom layer even number that is twelve so six coil sides under north pole six coil sides under south pole now if the starting of the coil is on the north pole side ending must be on which pole side south pole then only voltages will aid so let me draw it for first coil coil number one for coil number these are not coils these are coil sides now i am drawing coil number one for coil number one if the starting is under north pole ending must be under south pole next point if a starting is on the top layer ending must be on the bottom layer top layer means odd number bottom layer means even number now see for the first coil i am starting with one look at the back end connection very carefully i am starting with one this is under which pole tell me all of you north pole therefore end this is the starting of the north pole right this is the starting of the north pole therefore ending must be on the starting of the south pole for south pole can i say this is the starting but as starting is on the top layer ending must be on the bottom layer bottom layer means even number or odd number even number even number means i must connect with seven or eight yes i must connect with eight yes this is coil number one let me make it more clear this is quite confusing it's a very difficult topic please concentrate okay right this is coil number one now see these are what we will call it as a back end connections and front end will be accessible like this yes you are observing coil number one right now starting is odd number that is top layer ending is even number this is bottom layer this is under north pole this is under south pole you may have a doubt why i am not connected with seven seven is also under south pole only why i have not connected with seven because already the starting is a top layer odd number therefore ending must be bottom layer that must be even number okay and these two are connected by a back end connection also called as overhang connection okay now let us see what is the definition for back pitch represented by a letter yb okay now listen first all of you back pitch is defined as the difference between coil sides from starting to ending of a coil that means if there is a coil like this this is the starting 
this is the ending now the difference between these two is what we will call it as back pitch i am repeating back pitch is nothing but it is the difference between coil sides from starting to ending of a coil difference between coil sides that means you need to take the numbers look at this can i say this is one coil this is the starting of the coil what is the number 1 this is the ending of the coil what is the number 8 what is the difference between 8 and 1 7 that is nothing but back pitch here so in this example back pitch is equal to 8 minus 1 that is equal to 7 okay so see here this is back pitch okay back pitch i am repeating back pitch is nothing but the difference between starting of the coil to the ending of the coil will you tell me starting is always odd number or even number odd number because it is on the top layer ending is always even number because it is on the bottom layer difference between odd number and even number is a definitely odd number only so that's why back pitch is always is always an odd number back pitch is always an odd number now let me tell you a formula for this back pitch yes a standard formula for this back pitch and don't forget that we are talking about lap winding so back pitch is very clearly defined as starting to ending of a coil starting is on which side which pole north pole ending is under south pole difference between north pole to south pole can i say it is nothing but one pole pitch only what is mean by one pole pitch it is the distance between north pole to south pole therefore back pitch is nothing but indirectly one pole pitch one pole pitch but i need a formula here you tell me how many poles are there in this example two poles are there how many coil sides are there please understand everybody very carefully how many coil sides overall 12 out of those 12 coil sides how many sides under each pole six sides under each pole am i right or not okay one more point 12 coil sides means how many coils six coils six coils means 12 coil sides similarly if there are c coils how many coil sides will be there 2c okay i'm repeating if c coils are there how many coil sides 2c coil sides if 2c coil sides are there how many coil sides will be there under each pole that will become 2c b 2c by p coil sides per each pole am i right or not that is what is called as back pitch so back pitch is equal to 2c by p let us uh, use that formula here how many coils are there obviously students will confuse they will say 12 12 is not coils 12 is coil sides how many coils are there six coils six coils means 2 into 6 12 12 by how many poles are there 2 12 by 2 is equal to 6 but 6 is an even number or odd number even number therefore for that even number i have to add plus 1 to get an odd number because i told you back pitch is always an odd number only suppose you did a small calculation let us say a practical machine has let us assume that a practical machine has 60 coils okay 2 into 60 and it has six poles six poles then what is answer we will get a 20 but back pitch is always an odd number or even number odd number so therefore for that obtained value add some constant value so that we will get odd number okay suppose you did this calculation in a particular machine and you got an answer 16.2 but back pitch is always at an odd number so for that 16.2 you add 0.8 so that you will get a 17 which is a valid uh, odd number so 2c by p is the exact definition for back pitch but you need to add or subtract some small constant so that we will always get odd number 
सपोज टू सी बाई पी वी गॉट ए वैल्यू कॉल्ड लेट एस से फिफ्टीन पॉइंट फोर बट बैक पिच इज ऑलवेज एन ऑड नंबर सो वॉट आई डू इज दट आई विल सब्ट्रैक्ट माइनस पॉइंट फोर सो दट आई विल गेट ए वैलिड ऑड नंबर दट इज इक्वल टू फिफ्टीन सो देर फोर द एग्जैक्ट फॉर्मूला फॉर बैक पिच इज इट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्टार्टिंग ऑफ ए कॉयल टू एंडिंग ऑफ ए कॉयल स्टार्टिंग ऑफ ए कॉयल इज अंडर नॉर्थ पोल एंडिंग ऑफ ए कॉयल इज अंडर साउथ पोल द डिफरेंस बिटवीन नॉर्थ पोल एंड साउथ पोल इज वॉट वी विल कॉल इट एज वन पोल पिच therefore back pitch is nothing but the difference between starting to ending that means indirectly it is the number of coil sides per pole pitch it is the number of coil sides per pole pitch how many coil sides will be there number of coil sides are equal to two times of the coils per pole pitch means divide with p so number of coil sides per pole pitch means you will get the difference between these two okay so that is the formula for back pitch 2c by p plus or minus k and back pitch should be always an odd number suppose if you get two odd number choices then you need to discuss further more to decide which is the correct back pitch number okay we will discuss later so that is back pitch okay coil 1 is completed okay <clears throat> next let us discuss about coil 2 For coil two, can I say there will be again a starting and there will be again a ending? Starting should be always on the top layer or bottom layer. Top layer, top layer must be even or odd. Odd. Therefore, what is the next odd number after one? Three is the odd number. Therefore, for second coil, starting is three. Okay. This is under which pole? Can you tell me? North pole. Therefore, ending must be south pole, bottom layer. Starting is under North Pole top layer. Ending must be under South Pole bottom layer. What is the next bottom layer number? Ten. So therefore, it is connected with ten. So this is coil number two. Okay, coil number two. Can you tell me what is the starting number for coil two? Three. What is the ending number? Ten. What is the difference between three and ten? Once again, seven. That is nothing but back pitch. so for any coil back pitch is same can you tell me what about the next coil next coil will start with 5 can you tell me ending is even number bottom layer that is 12 now could this is going to be coil number 3 can you tell me what is a back pitch for coil 3 starting is 5 ending is 12 what is the difference between 5 and 12 again 7 back pitch is always same for every coil okay i'm repeating back pitch is the difference between starting of a coil to ending of a coil if starting number is 1 ending number is let us say 34 what is the difference between 1 and 34 33 is the back pitch if a starting number is something called x ending number is something called y then what is the back pitch y minus x that is going to be the back pitch okay so back pitch is the difference between coil sides from the starting of a coil to ending of a coil and back pitch is always an odd number indirectly starting to ending of a coil means starting of north pole to starting of south pole starting of north pole to starting of south pole is nothing but one pole pitch therefore back pitch is equal to number of coil sides per pole pitch number of coil sides that means two into coils by p okay so this is the formula for back pitch now let us discuss about uh, front pitch here okay now to understand front pitch calculation first we need to understand about number of commutator segments in this machine i told you already number of commutator segments are equal to number of number of what number of conductors number of coils number of coil sides number of turns then what is answer number of commutator segments are equal to number of coils how many coils are there here six coils six coils means how many segments are required six segments are required so let me draw uh, commutator segments here practically commutator is a circular only for the representation point of view i am drawing a linear okay so see uh, let us say first segment second segment third segment fourth segment fifth 
if this is a 6 the starting will also be 6 only okay right this is about commutator right now with six segments i hope you are following now let us see how the coils are connected to this commutator segments okay now let me take coil number one that is coil number one can i say for coil number one starting is uh, side one okay now what i am doing is that i am connecting the starting of the coil number one to let us say segment number one for a coil if the starting is connected to segment one can i connect ending also to the same segment what happens if the starting and ending are connected to same segment starting ending both are connected to same segment means can i say this coil is indirectly short circuited if the coil is short circuited very large circulating current will flow therefore machine will damage that's why to overcome that short circuiting condition if the starting of the coil is connected to segment number one ending will be connected to the next segment that is nothing but segment number two for segment one next segment is two that is going to be uh, first coil connection can i also say that for segment number one if i go in the opposite direction can i say six is the next segment therefore rather than connecting ending to segment number two if i connect ending to segment number three that is going to become retro progressive winding i am repeating retro progressive winding but always we will use progressive winding therefore if the starting is connected to segment number one ending will be connected to segment number two okay so first coil connection is completed starting is connected to segment one ending is connected to segment number two now let us see how coil number two is connected coil two now you carefully understand for the first coil starting is connected to one ending is connected to two as the first coil ending is connected to segment two the next coil starting will be connected to segment two okay so next coil starting is can i say three therefore this coil side three will be connected to ending of the first coil that is nothing but a segment two so pure technical understanding here if the ending of first coil connected to segment two starting of the next coil is also connected to segment two now tell me for the second coil if starting is connected to segment 2 ending will be connected to segment 3 that is the next segment first of all where is the ending for coil 2 ending is 10 that 10th coil side will be connected to segment number 3 for the second coil ending is connected to segment number 3 therefore for the next coil starting will be connected to segment number 3 what is the starting of the next coil that is coil number 3 for coil 3 can i say starting is nothing but a uh, side 5 so this is connected to segment 3 if the starting is connected to segment 3 ending will be connected to segment 4 next coil starting will be connected to segment 4 ending will be connected to segment 5 therefore the process will continue understand so this is how coils are connected to commutator segments now let us define what is mean by front pitch okay please listen this definition very carefully front pitch is nothing but listen front pitch is nothing but the difference between coil sides numbers which are connected to same segment please note down that definition it is the difference between coil sides numbers which are connected to same segment which are connected to same segment now you select segment number two can i say this is one connection for segment two this is another connection for segment two that means can i say coil side three and coil side eight both are connected to same segment therefore the difference between these two is what we will call it as front pitch okay 
tell me what is the definition for front pitch first of all front pitch is nothing but the difference between two coil sides which are connected to same commutator segment you select this coil side connected to which segment 2 this coil side connected to which segment same segment 2 therefore the difference between this 3 and 8 that is the front pitch and tell me what is the front pitch value here so front pitch is equal to this is 3 this is 8 therefore front pitch is also equal to 5 front pitch is equal to 5 and one more point you select a segment 3 for segment 3 again two connections are there this is the starting of a segment 3 this is another side of a segment 3 two connections are there and what is the number here 5 what is the number here 10 what is the difference between 5 and 10 again 5 front pitch is 5 you can select segment 4 any segment you select first of all what is mean by front pitch it is the difference between coil sides numbers which are connected to same segment which are connected to same segment these two are connected to same segment to the difference between these two is called as front pitch obviously you can understand here this is an odd number or even number odd number this is an even number therefore difference between an odd number and even number is again odd number therefore front pitch is always an odd number back pitch is always an odd number front pitch is also always an odd number only understand okay so there is no formula for front pitch we have to define front pitch formula in a different way let us see that so before defining that we have to discuss one more called as winding pitch we will represent with the letter y w so let us understand what is mean by winding pitch winding pitch is nothing but the difference between starting of the first coil to starting of the second coil that means indirectly it is the difference between startings of two adjacent coils i am repeating it is the difference between startings of two adjacent coils for first coil what is the starting number one for the second coil what is the starting number three the difference between this one and three is what we will call it as winding pitch this is y w i am repeating what is mean by winding pitch it is the difference between startings of two adjacent coils two adjacent coils means i can take coil one coil two or you can take coil two and coil three also for coil two what is the starting number three for coil three what is the starting number five what is the difference between three and five that is also two winding pitch is equal to two so therefore for lap winding winding pitch is always equal to two it is plus two if it is progressive winding and it is minus two if it is retro progressive winding why because progressive means we are moving in this direction retro progressive means we will move in opposite direction opposite direction means if it is one there will be minus one minus two minus three like that then if you are moving in opposite direction the same two becomes minus two that's all okay so therefore what is the value of winding pitch for lap connection always it is plus or minus two plus two if it is progressive winding minus two if it is retro progressive winding plus 2 if it is progressive minus a sign we will use if it is retro progressive all right so now you see this length is back pitch this length is this length this length is front pitch this small length is winding pitch can you tell me what is the relation between now back pitch front pitch and winding pitch yes this is back pitch this is front pitch this is winding pitch so can i say total back pitch length is equal to winding pitch plus front pitch yes so total back pitch is equal to winding pitch plus front pitch from this what is winding pitch is equal to back pitch minus front pitch back pitch minus front pitch already we have a formula for back pitch what is the formula for back pitch 2c by p plus or minus k 
दिस इज द फॉर्मूला फॉर बैक पिच वॉट इज द फॉर्मूला फॉर वाइंड वाइंडिंग पिच वाइंडिंग पिच देर इज नो फॉर्मूला डायरेक्टली ये इधर इट इज प्लस टू और माइनस टू प्लस टू इफ इट इज प्रोग्रेसिव माइनस टू इफ इट इज रेट्रो प्रोग्रेसिव यू टेक एनी टू अडजेंट कॉइल्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द स्टार्टिंग्स विल बी एक्सैक्टली टू लेट मी टेक कॉइल टू अंड थ्री स्टार्टिंग थ्री एंड नेक्स्ट कॉइल स्टार्टिंग फाइव डिफरेंस बिटवीन थ्री एंड फाइव इज टू If you take coil three and coil four, coil three starting five, coil four starting will be seven. Seven minus five that is two. If you take next coil again, it will be two only. Okay, so winding pitch is always plus or minus two for lap winding. These are all for lap winding. So you know back pitch formula already. You will calculate Y B. Y W is a fixed value. Y B is known. Y W is known. From that we can calculate. understand okay so this is the overall observation regarding lap connected winding and the definition for back pitch front pitch winding pitch one more point you need to understand here you see from this can you find out front pitch formula from this can i write down front pitch is equal to from this front pitch is equal to yb minus yw suppose if it is progressive winding progressive winding yb minus what is winding pitch for progressive winding plus 2 yb minus plus 2 means indirectly can i write front pitch is less than back pitch yes this is valid if the machine is progressive winding suppose if the machine is having a retro progressive winding what is the winding pitch value minus 2 minus of minus 2 means yf becomes yb plus 2 therefore front pitch becomes more than back pitch if it is retro progressive winding there was one question in the previous esc examination engineering services examination which of the following option is correct for retro progressive winding yf equal to yb yf greater than yb yf less than yb yf is equal to two times of yb then what is answer yf greater than yb if it is retro progressive winding yf less than yb if it is progressive winding understand so always remember this formula so that you can answer questions easily okay winding pitch is equal to back pitch minus front pitch okay fine now let us discuss about one more pitch calculation that is known as commutator pitch commutator pitch so please read the definitions available in your notes very carefully every definition is important now listen very carefully what is mean by commutator pitch commutator pitch means listen it is the difference between commutator segment numbers this time it is not the difference between coil sides numbers it is the difference between commutator segment numbers across which a coil is connected we know a coil will have a starting and ending across which that coil is connected the difference between those two commutator segment numbers is called as commutator pitch i'm repeating commutator pitch is nothing but the difference between commutator segment numbers across which a coil is connected you take any one coil here i would like to take coil number 1 if you take coil number 1 starting is connected to which segment 1 ending is connected to which segment 2 now what is the difference between 1 and 2 that is what we will call it as commutator pitch i hope you know what is the difference between 1 and 2 that is equal to 1 therefore for lap connection commutator pitch is always equal to plus or minus 1 if it is a plus 1 if it is a progressive okay progressive and minus 1 if it is retro progressive retro progressive understand plus 1 if it is progressive minus 1 if it is retro progressive progressive means if you start with 1 you add plus 1 you will get 2 you add plus 1 you will get 3 you add plus 1 you will get 4 if it is retro progressive 1 you move in the negative direction okay suppose if you start with 3 minus 1 you will get 2 Minus one you will get one. Minus one you will get don't say zero. You will get the next segment six. Minus one you will get five. Like that is retro progressive. So first of all, what is mean by commutator pitch? It is the difference between commutator segment numbers. Commutator segment numbers across which a coil is connected. We know in lap connection, 
if the starting of the coil is connected to segment number n ending will be connected to the next segment n plus 1 now what is the difference between n and n plus 1 that is one commuted pitch if the starting is connected to let us say segment number called 57 ending of the same coil will be connected to the next segment 58 the difference between 58 and 57 that is one that is what we will call it as commutator pitch commutator pitch means it is the difference between commutator segment numbers across which a coil is connected you take any coil let me select coil number three if I select coil number 3, starting is connected to which segment 3? Ending is connected to which segment 4? The difference between 3 and 4 is equal to 1, commutator pitch. Okay. So, commutator pitch for lap winding is always plus or minus 1. Winding pitch for lap correction is always plus or minus 2. Therefore, what is the relation between winding pitch and commutator pitch if I ask you? Very simple. Can I write winding pitch is equal to simply two times of commutator pitch? Yes or not? Winding pitch is always equal to two times of commutator pitch. This is very important. If you know commutator pitch, you can calculate winding pitch. Or if you know winding pitch, you can calculate commutator pitch. Okay. So, we discussed what is mean by back pitch, what is mean by front pitch, what is mean by commutator pitch, what is mean by winding pitch. Okay. Now, let us take up a practical example and we will see how the brushes will be connected to a lap connected machine. Okay. Let's see. Alright. Look at this example. I am considering a four pole lap connection having 12 coils and 12 slots. I am repeating 12 coils and 12 slots. That means how many coil sides in each slot? Two coil sides. Why? Because 12 coils means 24 coil sides. 24 coil sides in 12 slots indicates 2 coil sides in each slot. Okay. Now first calculate what is the back pitch value here. What is the formula for back pitch? Back pitch is equal to 2C by P plus or minus K. Here 2 into how many coils are there? 12. How many poles are there? 4 plus or minus K. Therefore, it is a 6 plus or minus k. But we know back pitch should be always an odd number. Now, if I add plus 1 here, I will get a back pitch 7. If I add minus 1 here, I will get a back pitch 5. 7 is odd number, 5 is also odd number. Now, how to decide which is the correct back pitch here? If I add plus 1, I will get a 7. Minus 1, I will get a 5. Which is the correct back pitch here? 7 is the correct back pitch or 5 is the correct back pitch. Very simple calculation I will do and then I will understand which is the correct back pitch. Total how many coil sides are there? 24 coil sides because 12 coils. 24 sides and how many poles are there? 4 poles. 24 sides in 4 poles that means how many sides per each pole? 24 by 4 6. Therefore, if I take a north pole and I take a south pole, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 sides under north pole, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 6 sides under south pole. Next again, north pole, 4 pole machine it is. This will have 13 to 18. Next one will have 19 to 24. Like that the process will continue. Now, if I select back pitch 5, or first let me select back pitch 7. If I select back pitch 7, that means if the starting of the coil started with 1, ending must be on which number? 8. It must be 8. Now, what is the difference between 1 and 8? 7. That is nothing but back pitch 7. Okay. Therefore, tell me here, starting is under which pole? Definitely it is under north pole. Ending is under which pole? Definitely south pole. North pole voltage, south pole voltage will add with each other. Suppose if I select back pitch 5, what happens? If I select back pitch 5, what happens? If I select back pitch 5, can you tell me if the starting is connected to 1, ending must be connected to 6. Then only the difference between 1 and 6 is equal to 5. 
But if you do like this, starting is under which pole? North pole. Ending is under which pole? South pole. If both are under the same polarity, what happens if similar polarity terminals are connected? Rather than adding, voltages will subtract. If voltage is subtracted, resultant voltage of the coil becomes zero. Therefore, 7 is the correct back pitch here or 5 is the correct back pitch? 7 is the correct back pitch and 5 is going to be the wrong back pitch. This is how you need to decide which is going to be the correct back pitch. But every time you can't draw a diagram like this, that's why what you need to do is that when you have two choices for back pitch, always remember, always remember, back pitch should be either greater than or equal to 2C by P. Here, if you calculate only 2C by P, what is answer? 6. Therefore, correct back pitch should be either equal to 6 or greater than 6. Equal to 6 choice is not there because obviously back EMF should be odd number. Therefore, what is greater than 6? 7 is the correct answer. Suppose if you do another machine, suppose if I gave you another data, you calculated this 2C by P directly you got let us say 9 here. Therefore, no need to add plus 1 or no need to subtract minus 1 here. Directly you will get 9 as the back pitch. But here 2C by P value is 6. Therefore, correct back pitch is greater than 6 that is equal to 7 is the correct answer. So, remember this. Back pitch should be either equal to or greater than 2C by P and it should be always odd number. So, now tell me 7 is the correct back pitch means please listen everybody very carefully. If 7 is the correct back pitch, if, if first coil started with 1, it must end with 8. Difference between 1 and 8 is 7. Okay, This is starting ending. Starting is always a top layer, odd number. Ending is always a bottom layer, even number. This is starting of first coil, ending of first coil. Tell me what is the starting of second coil. Starting of second coil means don't write 2 here. 2 is bottom layer. But starting should be always top layer. Odd number 3. Ending will be 10. Next coil 5, 12, 7, 14, 9, 16, 11, 18, 13, 20, 15, 22, 17, 24. Next 19, 26. Next, 21. Don't write 28. There are no 28 coil sides. How many coil sides are there? Only 24. Why? Because 12 coils means 24 coil sides. Therefore, writing 26 is also wrong. There are 24 only. After 24, what is the next even number? Don't say 26. It is equal to 2. Because machine is a circular machine. You start with 1. Finally, you end with 24. 24 coil sides. After 24, what is the next even number means? What is your answer? After 24, the next even number is 2. Next. After 2, next even number 4. After 4, the next even number is 6. Okay. Now, 23 is over. What is the next odd number? After 23, next odd number is 1. Therefore, you will come back here. Okay. That's all. All coil sides are completed. I told you this is confusing, obviously confusing topic. What we are talking, what are these numbers? Okay, everything is very important. Coil sides or coils or commutators or commutator segments. What we are talking about is important. What is the definition for back pitch? Back pitch is always the difference between coil sides from starting of the coil to ending of the coil. We found 7 is the correct back pitch. Therefore, if the starting is 1, ending is 8. 3, 10. You take difference between any two numbers here that is equal to 7. Okay. So, now let us try to draw the diagram over here. Okay. See. Okay. Assume this is the armature of the machine. Tell me how many slots are there in the entire machine? 12 slots. Okay. Let me mark 12 slots here. Okay. Let me start here. This is the first slot. Okay, these are the 12 slots in the machine. Let me also number them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
they are slot numbers every slot will have how many coil sides two coil sides let me provide two coil sides in every slot okay now top layers will now let me remove these slot numbers to avoid the confusion okay top layers are always given with odd numbers let me mark them okay let us say this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 Sorry, this side i should mark 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 that's all overall 12 coils are there in the machine that means 24 coil sides you can see all top layers are odd numbers all bottom layers are even numbers now what i am assuming is how many poles are there in this machine four poles how many slots are there 12 slots four poles 12 slots therefore how many slots under each pole three slots so see these first three slots let us say they are under the effect of north pole next three slots let us say these are under the effect of south pole next three slots these are under the effect of north pole next three slots these are under the effect of south pole okay so like that four poles are there and 12 slots are there now can you tell me north pole means what is the polarity cross polarity south pole means what is the polarity dot polarity again north pole what is the polarity cross polarity south pole means what is the polarity dot polarity that's all now let me complete back end connections first look at that back end means back side of the machine okay front end means front side of the machine that's all first back end connection is 1 to 8 you see i am using red color or i am using black color to represent back end connection see one must be connected to what 8 see this is number one here you have number eight so see this one is connected to eight next three is connected to ten look at this this is three this is ten three is connected to ten next one five is connected to twelve look at this five is connected to twelve next seven is connected to fourteen okay seven is connected to fourteen just to follow these numbers that's all 9 is connected to 16 look at this this is 9 this is 16 next 11 is connected to 18 yes or not next 13 is connected to 20 next 15 is connected to 22 next 17 is connected to 24 next 19 is connected to see after 24 what is the next bottom side 2 next 21 is connected to 4 next 23 is connected to 6 okay that's all all back end connections are completed i just followed these numbers that's all okay now let us see how to make front end connections okay see first of all to make front end connections i have to construct a commutator here how many number of commutator segments are required we know that number of commutator segments are equal to number of coils as there are 12 coils we need 12 commutator segments okay see this okay let me give the numbering segment 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay total 12 segments now let us see how to connect coils in lab finding we have already studied if the starting of a coil connected to segment 1, the ending must be connected to the next segment. That is nothing but segment 2. Next coil starting will be connected to 2, ending will be connected to 3. Next 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, like that proceedings will complete. Now can you tell me what is the starting of coil 1 here? Starting of coil 1 means 1. 
if i connect this side 1 to segment number 1 this ending must be connected to segment number 2 that's all so see i'm using blue color now one is connected to you take any segment no problem let me say one is connected to three this is the starting is connected to three therefore ending eight must be connected to the next segment that is four next coil start you see first coil ended with four means next coil must start with four therefore three is connected to four ten is connected to five next next coil starting five is connected to five 12 is connected to 6, 7 is connected to 6, 14 is connected to 7, 9 is connected to 7, 16 is connected to 8, 11 is connected to 8, next 18 is connected to 9, 13 is connected to 9, 20 is connected to 10, 15 is connected to 10, 22 is connected to 11, next 17 is connected to 11, 24 is connected to 12 next after 17 19 is connected to 12 2 is connected to 1 next after 19 21 is connected to 1 4 is connected to 2 next 23 is connected to 2 next 6 is connected to 3 that's all all connections are completed with commutator also see it looks very difficult if you look at the diagram directly or this is this much large these many connections you may understand very difficult but if you follow the procedure it is simple if the starting of a coil is connected to segment 3 ending must be connected to segment 4 next coil starting must start from segment 4 it must end at segment 5 next coil must start with 5 end with 6 next coil start with 6 end with 7 like that the proceedings are completed now we need to understand where the brushes must be located where the brushes must be located you see here first of all understand the current directions uh, whatever conductors are or coil sides under north pole what is the polarity into the plane into the plane means can i say current is going into the conductor or current is coming out of the conductor cross is indicating current is going into the conductor so let me mark all the currents which are going into the conductor current is going into the conductor means current is flowing from segment to conductor or conductor to segment segment to conductor going into the conductor dot polarity means out of the conductor that means current is coming out of the conductor and going into the segment so that means conductor to segment so let me mark this is c cross polarity therefore this blue color line segment to conductor into the into the conductor next one that is connected here that is also into the conductor this is also cross into the conductor this is also cross into the conductor you see this is also cross into the conductor you see this line into the conductor right or not now you see this is dot or cross this is dot dot means current is coming out coming out that means from the conductor to segment that is you see the arrow mark from the conductor to segment next you see this is also dot this is also dot this is also dot this is also dot okay you see this line this line is also a dot but this is cross cross means current is going like this next this is cross this is cross this is also cross this is also a cross polarity this is also a cross polarity now this is a dot that means a conductor to commutator conductor to commutator conductor to commutator dot conductor to commutator dot conductor to commutator this is also dot conductor to commutator that's all all current directions are also marked now where we need to keep the brush we know brushes are generally used to tap the current from commutator segments that means you see that suppose i have one parallel path i have another parallel path if this parallel path is generating the current this parallel path is generating the current i will keep a brush here that brush will tap the current outside that means indirectly if if current is into the brush and into the brush then there is a brush requirement similarly at this contact also current is going away going away therefore you need a brush here to take the current okay similarly here you see you look at a segment one all of you for segment one 
you look at this arrow mark current is coming into the segment and again from the other contact the same current is going away from the segment i hope you are following current is coming in and going away therefore there is nothing to tap 10 amperes coming in 10 amperes going away there is nothing to tap look at segment 3 also 10 amperes coming in 10 amperes going away there is nothing to tap but look at segment number 3 here i need a brush why because you see at segment number 3 this is going away this is also going away that means the brush is taking see this is i this is i this brush will take to i okay so next four if you look at fourth segment coming in going out coming in and going out but you look at segment number six both currents are coming into the segment therefore this brush will tap that current outside similarly look at seventh coming in going out coming in going out now look at segment number nine here both currents are going out therefore brush will get the current in to i similarly tenth segment coming in and going out coming in and going out but look at twelfth segment here both currents are coming in so brush will take that current out that's all overall how many brushes are placed here four brushes four pole four parallel path lap connected machine now an important observation here is that let me draw a line passing through brushes here if you draw a line passing through brushes yes can i say this is brush axis line yes or not now you tell me this brush axis line is along the interpolar axis or along the polar axis you look at this this is south pole okay this is a south pole i hope all of you are observing for this south pole can i say this brush line is exactly at the center of the pole indirectly this brush line is exactly at the center of the pole means brushes are located along which axis of the machine direct axis of the machine this is physical location of the brush but when we studied about commutation we told that brushes must be always placed along mna axis mna axis means interpolar axis that is electrical location of the brush what is the difference between physical location and electrical location see when the brush is along mna axis indirectly the coil which is short circuited across the brush do not have any voltage therefore there is no circulating current there is no arcing so the basic concept is to have arcless commutation the coil which is short circuited across the brush that short circuited coil must be along mna axis not brush brush can be anywhere in the machine brush can be anywhere in the machine but the short circuited coil of the brush must be along the interpolar axis therefore similarly in this diagram also brush may be looking like it is along polar axis of the machine but the coil which is short circuited by this brush that coil will be along interpolar axis so therefore always remember physical location of the brush physical location of brush is along is along polar axis physical location of the brush is along the polar axis but what is the short circuited coil location see brush may be here but the coil which is short circuited by this brush this is the interpolar axis but brush physical location is along the direct axis or polar axis so important thing is where the brush is located is not important where the short circuited coil is located is important brush may be located along a polar axis but the short circuited coil by that brush will be located along interpolar axis that is the point everyone must understand so what is the physical location of the brush polar axis of the machine what is the electrical location electrical location means the coil which is short circuited by the brush will be along which axis mna that is interpolar axis okay that is how you can see anywhere in the machine even this brush also you draw a line if you draw a line passing through this brush this is also polar axis of the machine the brushes looks like they are along polar axis but the coil which is short circuited by the brush 
they are along interpolar axis okay so what is the physical location of the brush if i ask you what is your answer polar axis of the machine what is the electrical location electrical location means the coil which is short circuited by that brush will be along interpolar axis or mna axis of the machine okay so it's obviously a difficult diagram understanding if you follow step by step you can make this diagram easy okay always follow this procedure then you will understand uh, how these coils and brushes everything will be placed okay look at the question on the board a four pole lap wound dc machine with 20 slots and 60 coils calculate what is back pitch and front pitch so use our standard formula back pitch is equal to 2c by p plus or minus k 2 into how many coils are there 60 coils by 4 plus or minus k this is 120 by 4 plus or minus k that is 30 plus or minus k 30 plus or minus k means what is the possibility of the back pitch 31 and 29 30 plus 1 31 odd number 30 minus 1 29 also odd number now how to decide whether 31 is the correct back pitch or 29 is the correct back pitch once again draw the diagram and try to avoid split coils if split coils are avoided that is the correct back pitch if the split coils are coming that is going to be the wrong back pitch first of all how many coil sides are there here 60 coils 60 coils means how many sides 60 coils that is equal to 120 coil sides if 120 coil sides are there how many sides will be under each slot coil sides per each slot that is equal to 120 coil sides by 20 slots that means six coil sides per each slot six coil sides per each slot therefore top layer will have three bottom layer will have three next top layer will have three bottom layer will have three like that the process will continue also give the numbering one two three four five six seven uh, bottom layer eight nine ten eleven twelve so continue the next slot start with 13 end with 18 next slot start with 19 end with 24 next slot start with 25 end with 30 next one 31 32 33 34 35 36 like that the process will continue suppose if we choose back emf is equal to 31 if back emf is a 31 if starting is 1 what is the ending 32 if starting is a 3 what is the ending 34 if starting is a 5 what is the ending 36 so can i say here 1 3 5 all are on a single slot 1 3 5 all are on a single slot but you tell me 32 34 36 are on a single slot or two different slots you see 32 34 36 are on a single slot yes or not if they are see 32 34 36 are also on a single slot can i say 31 is going to be the correct answer so starting on a single slot and ending is also on a single slot now what happens if yb is equal to 29 if back emf is equal to 29 that means if the starting is 1 ending is 30 starting is 3 ending is 31 sorry 32 if starting is 5 ending will be 34 now tell me 1 3 5 or on a single slot then 30 32 34 you see 30 is here 30 is here 32 is here 34 is here now you tell me the ending is on the same slot or two different slots two different slots that is offering split coils okay if split coils came into picture that is going to be the wrong selection of back pitch so what is the correct answer 31 is the correct answer 29 is the wrong answer so like this we can check whether it is a split coil nature or without split coil nature if it is without split coil that is the correct back pitch with split coil that is a wrong back pitch once the back pitch is calculated easily front pitch can be calculated what is the what is the formula we know winding pitch is equal to back pitch minus front pitch 
front pitch is equal to back pitch minus wind, winding pitch and what is the value of winding pitch for lap connection for lap connection winding pitch is always equal to 2 if it is uh, progressive minus 2 if it is retro progressive so using that we can easily calculate front pitch of the machine as well okay so important so when a number of slots a number of coils poles and everything are given how to identify which is the correct back pitch or not just use this split coil observation if split coils are not observed that is the correct back pitch if split coils are observed that is the wrong back pitch okay now let us discuss about wave winding so far we discussed about lap winding connections now let us discuss about wave winding uh, back pitch formula will be very similar but front winding pitch formula and front pitch formula are slightly different let us see that same example i am taking once again you assume a machine with number of poles okay a four pole machine i am taking you take even 40 pole machine also same concept is valid okay like that under every pole number of coil sides are there this is one let me draw bottom conductor i mean coil side with the dotted line to top one odd number bottom one even number top one odd number bottom num one even number so now south pole 7 8 9 10 11 12 next next 13 14 15 16 17 18 Next south pole, 20, sorry, odd number, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So, like that number of coil sides are there. Now, number of commutator segments will also be there. How many number of commutator segments are required? Number of segments are equal to number of coils. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that the process will continue. If the last segment is 6, the starting segment is also 6. 24 coil sides, that means 12 coils. 12 coils means you need 12 segments. That means the last segment is 12. Okay, 11. Like that the process will continue. Now let's see how lap winding connection will be provided. See, the back end connections are very similar to lap connection. If the starting is under north pole, the ending should be on the next to south pole but bottom layer bottom layer means eighth okay now let us see how these are connected to commutator if the starting of a coil is connected to let us say segment number one in lap connection what we did the ending will be connected to the next segment two if a starting of a coil connected to one ending will be connected to the next segment two but in case of wave winding, the connection is slightly different. You see, number of segments will be there. What is a segment before 11? 10, 9, 8, like that. Okay. Now, you see in wave connection, if the starting is connected to one segment, let us say 9, ending will not be connected to the next segment 10. It will be connected to another segment, which is two pole pitches away. which is two pole pitches away this is wave connection that's all now you tell me this is ending of the first coil if this is the ending of the first coil this will be connected to starting of the next coil this is under which pole south pole if ending is under south pole next coil starting must be under which pole north pole so can i say for north pole this is the starting so this is the starting of the second coil therefore ending will be under south pole if the starting of the coil is connected to segment 5 ending will be connected to the next segment 6 or two pole pitches away yes it will be connected to the next segment which is two pole pitches away okay so here two pole pitches will be there this is just wave connection all right like that all the coils we need to connect so is it looking like a wave connection yes or not it looks like just like a wave that's why the name is given as wave in case of lap winding all the coils are overlapping on each other that's why it is called as lap connection so in a wave connection if the starting is here ending is here 
next coil starting will be again under the north pole ending is under the south pole now what is the distance between starting of a coil to ending of a coil this is nothing but back pitch we know next do you remember what is the definition for front pitch front pitch is nothing but the difference between coil sides which are connected to same segment if i look at segment number 5 can i say this one and this one both are connected to same segment this is 8 this is 13 the difference between these two is what we will call it as front pitch the definition you need to follow what is the definition for front pitch it is the difference between coil sides numbers which are connected to the same segment which are connected to the same segment okay back pitch is done and front pitch is done now what is a winding pitch formula winding pitch is nothing but the difference between starting of two adjacent coils you see this is coil one this is coil two can i say this is the starting of coil one this is the starting of coil two now the distance between these two is what we will call it as winding pitch so winding pitch means it is the difference between coil sides of two adjacent coils okay it is the difference between the starting of two adjacent coils this is one coil this is the adjacent second coil first coil second coil and the third coil will be after this fourth coil will be after that like that okay so what is mean by winding pitch it is the difference between starting of two adjacent coils two adjacent coils okay this is the starting of first coil this is the starting of second coil this difference is nothing but winding pitch now you tell me what is the relation between winding pitch back pitch and front pitch yes very simple we know winding pitch is equal to yes this distance back pitch this distance front pitch back pitch plus front pitch what is the same winding pitch in case of lap connection back pitch minus front pitch in wave connection it is back pitch plus front pitch but the definitions are not changed what is the definition for back pitch it is the difference between starting of a coil to ending of a coil front pitch it is the difference between two coil sides which are connected to same segment winding pitch it is the difference between starting of two adjacent coils and once again back pitch formula remains the same back pitch is equal to 2c by p plus or minus k it should be always an odd number okay because same back pitch coil means starting ending starting is under north pole ending is under south pole that distance is the same whether it is lap or wave but which formula is changing front pitch and winding pitch are going to change so if i wanted to calculate front pitch i need winding pitch value because back pitch already formula is there now winding pitch has a formula i am not going to derive it because it is a lengthy formula okay i will directly give you what is the formula for uh, winding pitch i will write winding pitch formula directly winding pitch is equal to 2c plus or minus 2 by p by 2 if i go through the derivation you will understand this but this is a very long derivation i am not going through that i am directly writing 2c plus or minus 2 by p by 2 in examination nobody will ask you derivation of winding pitch of a wave connection it's a huge lengthy one so look at this this is 2c plus or minus 2 by p by 2 p by 2 indicates pole pair 2c is nothing but number of coil sides plus or minus 2 by p by 2 this is the formula for winding pitch when you know back pitch and winding pitch easily we can calculate front pitch okay next how to calculate commutator pitch yes we have a relation between commutator pitch and winding pitch directly in lap connection also we discussed what is the relation winding pitch is always equal to two times of commutator pitch you remember in lap connection winding pitch is always equal to two plus or minus two plus two for progressive minus two for retro progressive commutator pitch is always equal to plus or minus one so two is equal to two times of one and the same formula is valid even for wave winding also therefore if you know winding pitch how to calculate commutator pitch that is 1 by 2 times of winding pitch yes or not so just to substitute here you will get the formula of commutator pitch 
from this commutator pitch is equal to 1 by 2 times of what is winding pitch 2c plus r minus 2 by p by 2 so if you complete this uh, let me write here commutator pitch will be equal to c plus r minus 1 by p by 2 that p by 2 is just pole pairs that's all okay so this is commutator pitch winding pitch back pitch from which front pitch can be easily calculated okay so i am not performing the proof of this equation it is a lengthy one okay just to follow this equation that is simple okay so this is about wave connection of a dc machine all right so we did our calculations regarding four important parameters back pitch front pitch winding pitch commutator pitch always back pitch question is very important when you calculated back pitch sometimes two choices may come which choice is correct which choice is wrong just perform that split coil nature or split coil calculation if there are no split coils that is the correct back pitch calculation if there is a split coil that is going to be the wrong back pitch calculation once the back pitch is there easily we can find out front pitch and winding pitch and commutator pitch okay that's all so this is about armature winding design concepts there is much more to discuss there is no end for armature winding design concepts but as for the examination is concerned up to here it is important